So I'm going to teach you how to process an array. The first thing is to print the contents of the array. How do you print the contents of this array? I can say you might have created array using new keyword or you might have created an array using what? Array initializer. It doesn't matter. Suppose if I want to print the contents of this array, I would say array of zero, same way. I can go with array of one and I can, I could be keep going, but imagine there is an array of size like is already eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, 10 or hundred. Literally we cannot keep going writing statement like this, isn't it? So we use our intelligence and since you already know loops, what you do, we'll say i here and we'll put this statement inside a loop for int i equal to zero, i less than, i less than array dot length i plus plus. Remember this here. We should not say i less than or equal. If I say less than or equal to what happens? Array dot length returns eight. But the range of the array varies from the index value varies from zero to seven. So if I say less than or equal to array of dot length, so at some point i value become eight. And when you say array of eight, we'll get an array index out of bounds exception. So to prove that if I want to go and compile it, I would say Java C. I written the class name as processing the arrays dot Java. Then I written the class name as processing arrays. Now to prove that, let me go ahead and compile this. I have compiled and I am executing this now. You see that it was printing and since we try to access and um, beyond its range, we are getting an exception saying that array index out of bonds exception. So I should say less than array dot length. Now if I go ahead and compile this and re-execute it, there is no exception as such. This is the first example for processing the array. Suppose if I have, let's say another array, int my array equal to new int, let's say 1000. Uh, let's keep it a smaller number so that we can see the output. I will comment this because I don't want to see this output now. Now I want to print the contents of this array. What do I do? I would do exactly same, isn't it? I would say for int i equal to zero, my array dot length and my array of i. So in the first iteration, i value will be zero, one, two, three, like that, so it will be keep going. So at some point, uh, we loop will break when the i reaches the same size as the length. But in this case, what's the output we see? In this case, we are seeing this output. In this case, remember, we studied that when we create an array, not only the memory is allocated for the variables, even they get initialized also. Since it is integer array, it will be initialized with zero. So what is the output we see now? Let me compile this and execute. It's all zero. It is filled with zero. Same way, we can use the for loop to fill this array with some random numbers or natural numbers. That's something I'm going to look into in the coming lessons. What if I say Boolean? So we created a Boolean array i is int because it's an index value, index value is a number. So that goes from 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. But my array is of type boolean, my array of 0, my array of 1 is going to print. So what is going to print? Since it is a boolean array, we studied that boolean array is filled with, filled with what? Filled with false. So we get the output as false for everything. So what we studied, we learned how to process the array in that the first lesson that is how to print the contents of the array. Got the point? Same way I have written one more example for printing the contents of character array. Uh, please go forward in the notes and do all those programs. Then go to the next video.